Hello everyone, today we are doing experiment number 11, which is going to be the titration of a unknown uh, hydrochloric acid solution concentration. So the first part of this experiment, which is part A, is we're going to do a titration to determine the accurate concentration of sodium hydroxide. So to be able to do this, we have a solution of sodium hydroxide that's already prepared, and it's approximately 0.1 molar, but to determine its actual concentration, we're going to be using the method of titration to be able to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're using what's called a burette, and we're going to be filling this burette with the sodium hydroxide solution. So we will pour this in. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that there's no air trapped anywhere in this burette. And so we're going to open this up to allow some sodium hydroxide to drain out to make sure that no air is trapped anywhere in this. Okay. Now our burette is ready to be used. Okay. So the first thing we're going to have to do is record the initial volume of the sodium hydroxide inside of our burette. To be able to do this, I want to make sure the volume that I'm reading is at eye level. And so I'm going to lower this down, okay. and now I'm going to record what the initial volume is. The initial volume of this is 0 0.40 milliliters. Okay. Now our burette is ready to be used. The next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to be titrating this against oxalic acid. So we already have pre-weighed out 0.1314 grams of oxalic acid. And so notice this is the solid form of the oxalic acid. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some deionized water to bring it to a solution. So we want to add approximately 10 to 20 milliliters. But because we have the accurate weight of the oxalic acid, the amount of water that we add is it going to affect our results because the mass of the oxalic acid is what we're going to use to determine the moles of oxalic acid. So we want to bring this in the solution. I'm doing this with a gentle swirling motion. Okay. And so, so now that we have the oxalic acid dissolved, the next thing we have to do is we need to add what's called an indicator to our solution. The indicator that we are using is phenophthalene, and how indicators work is they will give us a visual clue of when we reach what's called the end point of titration. And so how phenophthalene works, I'll add a couple drops, is in the presence of an acid, notice the color is clear. What will happen is when we added enough of the sodium hydroxide, to our oxalic acid to completely react, it will then be a neutral solution, but then by adding one additional drop, and it will become a basic solution which will turn pink. So we're looking for a very faint pink color. To help be able to see this pink color, we're doing this against the white background. So now we're ready to begin our titration. So we're slowly going to start adding our sodium hydroxide to our oxalic acid. And notice initially, I'm going pretty fast, and the reason why is you can notice you don't really see any pink color. As we start to get closer and closer to our end point of titration, you're going to notice a pink color starting to show, but by swirling it, we see that it disappears. And so what will happen as you get closer and closer to that end point of titration, the pink color is going to persist longer and longer. So when we start to get to that point, then we'll start to slow it down because we want to know exactly what volume of sodium hydroxide it took to get to the end point of titration. Okay. And as you can see, the pink color is starting to last longer and longer. So when we get to this step, we want to start adding the sodium hydroxide 
a little bit slower. To make sure we don't add too much of this sodium hydroxide and go past the end point of titration. Notice by just adding these couple of drops, that pink color is lasting a lot longer. So when this happens, we know we're really close. So we'll add a drop. Okay. And now, notice we have a pink color that's not disappearing. We've reached our end point of titration. So now what we want to do is record the volume that it took to do this. And so we bring it to eye level and we have 20.60. And that was our first titration to determine the concentration of sodium hydroxide.